All right. We're going to look at another implicit differentiation problem. The same rules apply uh, as with the last one, but just going to be a little more complicated. So we start out cosine of y. Okay, the derivative here. Um, again, first, just first things uh, same as always before. Just the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's going to be uh, negative sine y. But then, since we took the derivative of y, we're going to multiply by dy over dx. Okay. Now this next part, a little uh, tricky right here. We got to be careful. Okay. And we're going to have to use the product rule since it's x squared times y. So let me take us over here. So it's going to be x squared is one function and y is the other, okay? And um, what we need to do is figure out the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. The derivative of y is just 1 times dy over dx, so it's just going to be dy over dx. So now I have this minus here. I could have, if I wanted to, I guess, taken that minus and placed it with one of the x squared or the y, okay? And that would have taken into account fine. I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put minus, and I'm going to put parentheses here to make sure that negative gets distributed. So for my product rule, I'm doing x squared times derivative of y, so it's x squared times dy over dx, plus y times the derivative of x squared, so y times 2x. So, which I guess, when I multiply y times 2x, I'll rewrite that as 2xy. Okay. And then plus, so then I'm going to just continue working on here. The derivative of 3y squared is 6y times dy over dx. And the derivative of 100 is just 0. It's just a constant. Okay. All right. So at this point here, I need to get all my dy over dx's on one side, all my terms without dy over dx's on the other side. Okay. So this negative right here is the first thing I'll deal with, and I will distribute it to both this term and this term here. And I'm going to cheat a little bit since I have a whiteboard. So when I distribute it, this term will be negative, as well as this term here will be negative. Okay. So again, I just distributed that negative right there, which I know I cheated because I have a whiteboard here. But um, next thing, this is my only term that doesn't have a dy over dx, so I'll move that to the right side, keeping all the other terms on the left side. So negative sine y, dy over dx. Um, minus x squared dy over dx plus 6y dy over dx equals, and then this term right here will be moved to the other side to be 2xy. Let me make sure I have that. Okay, hopefully that looks good. All right, now where I have all my dy over dx's here, I'm going to factor out my dy over dx. So I'll factor dy over dx out from all of those terms, and so I'll be left with, in this term, I'm left with negative sine of y. Over here, I'm left with minus x squared. Right here, I'm left with plus 6y equals 2xy. All right, so then my goal here from the beginning was to find the derivative of this implicitly defined function. The derivative is dy over dx. So right here, I'll get dy over dx by itself. OK, so it's going to be 2xy over and the way I'm getting it by itself is dividing by this and bringing it over here. So it's over negative sine y minus x squared plus 6y. So, and that's a 2. It kind of looks like a z, but it's 2xy. So kind of a lengthy derivative there. But, you know, nonetheless, that derivative right there does tell us what we want in terms of it tells us the slope of this function at various points. So if you knew a certain point on that graph, um, you could just plug the x and y value in, and it would tell you the slope at that point. 